It's yet to see that. You have to show me. Okay, um, I believe it to be 6.30, so um, I'd like to call to order the June 3rd, 2019 meeting of the Heritage Preservation Board. Okay. We have roll call. Ms. Johnson. Here. Ms. Page. Here. Ms. Milford. Ms. Cornell. Here. And I believe it's customary to ask everyone to turn off their cell phones and uh, maybe introduce everyone. Um, Kimberly Others, Secretary to the Board. Gary Page, Vice Chair of the Board. Carol Johnson, Chair. Pat Cornell, Member. Eric Jello, Board Attorney. Pat McNeese, Principal Planner. Okay, the first order on the agenda is public comments. Is there anyone here that would like to speak about a matter other than the cases that are on the agenda? Okay, seeing no one, um, let's proceed with the approval of the minutes. Any comments of, of, regarding the minutes of May 6, 2019? Kim, I just had one comment. Um, in the attendance, you have me listed as vice chair and Carrie as member. So okay, I can correct that. Correct. Any other comments on the minutes? Make a motion that the minutes are approved. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. Let's see, before we proceed with the quasi judicial announcement, I just wanted to note, since there are only three board members present, it would take the vote of all three of the members on the board in order to uh, pass a motion. So if anybody would like to continue their application until there's a full complement of the board, um, they're welcome to do so. Should they identify themselves now? They can do that now, now if they'd like to, or oh. we can do it as they're presented. I mean, I would think for, for time purposes, depending upon where they fall on the agenda. That's application 19-1. Anybody else? With the quasi we can. I just wanted to make a note that you wanted to continue until the next regular meeting of the board of the Heritage Preservation <coughs> Board. Okay. What, it, the next, yeah, it will continue to the next meeting, and then we'll know at that time whether or not there's a full complement of the board, and you can address it at that time. Of course. And, and that meeting is July eighth, right? That's Rather correct. Than July first. Yes, because mm -hmm. of the Fourth of July holidays. <laughs> <laughs> This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Heritage Preservation Board acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the board wishing to disclose any ex parte communications or conflicts of interest this evening? No. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak this evening, if you could please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Mm -hmm. So sworn. Okay, so since application 90-20 has 
has been continued. We'll proceed with application 19 41 106 North Lewis Avenue, placement of a shed, non contributing historic property. Is there anyone who'd like to speak? Oh, we'll have the staff presentation. First. Oh, staff presentation. Okay, and this is a, a request to place a new prefabricated shed on the property. This is a historic structure that is non contributing to the local district. There is an existing shed on the property. Uh, the applicant has, um, the application includes a 10 foot by 20 foot shed, and the applicant has sin since stated that the size is 10, actually 10 by 16. I'd like the applicant to confirm that. Um, that's just a, a verbal to me. Um, the applicant, uh, going through the review criteria, the applicant has selected a lofted barn style of the uh, prefabricated shed. Uh, the long axis of the shed is oriented parallel with the rear property line, and it's proposed to be basically uh, placed at the northwest corner of the primary residence <coughs> next to the existing shed, so it would be, it would be at the side of the principal residence uh, um, addressing that aspect of the guidelines. Um, the shed uh, must be at least five feet from the property line, so the applicant has placed it as close to the property line as, as uh, allowable. Um, so the, this area is basically back in the corner of the yard when you're looking from Levis or from Orange Street. The proposed height is 11 feet 2 inches. And uh, the, again, the location should help to mitigate the impact of the scale on the shed um, on the primary property. Uh, it's designed uh, to be, again, the lofted barn style. Uh, the property itself is, again, not contributing, apparently due to some significant alterations to the principal structure. Um, the lofted barn style of shed includes barn style doors with a cross or X braces and windows on either side of the doors, and there are no windows on the two ends of the shed. Um, basically, with respect to item three, again, um, this property is a little bit unusual, I guess, in that it's addressed on North Levis um, so that uh, the short, the long axis of the property is the front of it rather than being a side yard. So um, the applicant, again, has limitations with that rear yard. So they've chosen that kind of to, to put it in the corner of the, the open area of the yard next to the existing shed. Um, this property is on the east edge of the district, historic districts. So really historic um, other properties in the district are located to the north and south. To the south is 455 um, East Tarpon, a property you all are familiar with. <coughs> Uh, you would not be able to see the shed from that property. To the north is a mix of properties, some contributing, some not. Um, again, uh, because this shed is, is kind of pushed back into the corner of the yard, it should not affect the, the feel or character of, of the rest of the historic district. Um, the building itself is proposed to be a light gray shed. It appears to be of a, a wood and metal kind of a wood material with metal um, siding. Uh, the roof is proposed to be a metal roof. The applicant has stated two, um, indicated two different choices of color for the roof uh, on the application. And the proposed uh, shed does meet the standards uh, of the uh, city's guidelines. And it is something also that could be easily removed uh, at any time, it doesn't really affect the, the principal structure of the property. Uh, it appears to meet the land development code and, uh, and is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, staff will be verifying the size of the shed, new shed and existing shed to verify that they are within the uh, allowable limits for sheds. Um, public notice was sent out and there, was, there were no comments on this application. Staff is recommending approval of this application to place a new prefabricated shed on the subject property 
as described in the application, uh, the applicant would be respons responsible for obtaining all required building permits, and the size of the shed, again, must conform with the requirements of the Land Development Code. Okay. Now it's time for the applicant to speak. Well, unless the board has any questions of the staff. Oh, oh let's go. Um, I just had one question of the staff. Um, what is the total amount of area that the shed can occupy? Um, I do not have the exact measurements of this existing shed. Both sheds together must uh, cover 200 square feet or less. So the applicant right now is proposing for the new shed 160 square feet. Um, there are a variety of sizes apparently available, so if it has to be less, it, it could be, but that would limit the current shed to 40 square feet. Any other questions? No. I didn't like to add anything, and please state your name and address. Uh, my name is Leanne Cusick, 106 North Levis Avenue. Um, I have no comments. Everything there was true and correct that she said. I have a question. Will the old shed stay there? Are you planning to leave it there and, and have two sheds? It, if it falls within the square footage, yes. But if not, then we can remove it. Mm -hmm. So what is the size of the current shed? Uh, five, five by seven right now, five by seven. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the proposed shed is what then? Uh, 10 by 16. Other questions? Um, I'm a little bit, can you explain, if the existing shed stays there and the new shed is added, I'm just a little bit concerned about the obstruction of the front of the home and that in that area because you now have more space. I mean, this um, staff has approved the new shed with that size, but was it with the understanding that the existing shed would be there or not? My understanding is that the existing shed is going to remain. Oh, okay. Yes. No. I'd like to entertain a motion. Uh, you need the public comment first. Oh, public comment. So is there anyone in the uh, audience who would like to speak either in favor or against this application? Seeing none. Seeing none. I would like to I motion that the proposal be accepted as written. That the shed be allowed. I'm just, I'm just a little bit unclear about the size. I'm sorry, going mm -hmm. back to this, but it says the application lists the proposed size at 10 by 20. However, with the existing shed on the property. This proposal would exceed the allowable square footage for the sheds on the property. Because the total for all sheds on a property is 200 square feet. They proposed a 200 square foot shed and also indicated they were not going to remove the existing shed. Yeah, I, I probably wasn't clear. I'm sorry. So that's why I actually called and, and talked with them and Apparently, they had already decided to do a 10 by 16, and I wasn't aware of that, so. So that's oh, smaller, 10 by 16 is yeah. smaller, and the existing shed is, what did you say? I'm five sorry. by seven. Five by seven. So it's about 35, so they'd be under if that, but we will definitely verify that at time of building permit. So there's a motion, and the motion will die for lack of a second if there's no. Okay, I'll second the, emo the motion. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Page? 
Yes. Ms. Johnson. Congratulations. Make sure you get a building permit. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so the next application is application 19 42 103 South Pinellas Avenue, renovation of the facade. And this is for exterior renovations to an existing contributing property, uh, the facade of an existing commercial building. Um, this is a structure that is contributing to both the national and local historic districts. Uh, the work will be performed on the north face of the building on the one, uh, the one story attached garage. The, generally, the proposal is to remove the existing garage door and wood siding to, and to install a new garage door, new entry door, new transom windows, and new light fixtures and then uh, to finish with new stucco finishing on the entire facade. Um, with respect to the guidelines, uh, item one, basically the height, width, and scale and massing of the structure will not be disturbed, so uh, that uh, is compliant. Um, uh, the next item, the existing structure, again, will not be preserved, excuse me, well, not, I'm reading and talking at the same time. Existing structure will not be disturbed. It's an existing zero lot line structure, um, and um, it's built in about 1925. So um, it's got an existing sidewalk and driveway apron, and everything there is uh, compliant. With respect to the roof, the existing roof and parapet will not be disturbed by this proposal. So that's okay with the, uh, respect to the um, uh, next item, the proposed renovations will be reflective of the, of the building's original architectural style. Uh, this is a building that has served commercial uses over the years, different, different uses. Um, and uh, the applicant proposes to continue that service while preserving the historic look of, of the garage. So um, the elements of the principal building that are carried over, the stucco and parapet roof mainly will not be disturbed. Those will be uh, consistent. And um, uh, so we've already talked about um, what is being proposed. Going down to the architectural details uh, under item seven, uh, again, the new stucco on the entire north face of the garage addition. Uh, is proposed for the, the to uh, be carried to the lower portion of the building after that wood um, siding is removed. Um, the custom-made garage door and entry door are to be a framed glass panes, and uh, the entry door will be storefront style door and full glass panel. Uh, the material is not in the application. The applicant has stated verbally um, to me that the material will be metal. Um, we can uh, confirm that when the applicant presents. Uh, the metal storefront doors are consistent with the rest of the building and in fact are called out on the site file form. Um, for the new transom windows above the doors, the main building does have transom windows and uh, those are called out as well on the site file form. The windows proposed appeared to be um, like a commercial kind of wire mesh type window with white frames. And um, the details of the materials are not um, included, but um, my observation of the, of the building, I did visit the building actually after I wrote this. So <laughs> I said that perhaps they were wood. It looks like what's on the building and the applicant can confirm that the transom windows still have their wood frames. The other windows appear to be metal windows with, with wood frames. Um, so we would want to confirm the materials for that. On the two new light fixtures, the applicant has chosen sort of a Spanish style and Mediterranean light fixture that is consistent with, with the building. Um, uh, we would want to hear uh, from the applicant on the um, 
finish the material and, and uh, finish for the panels that are proposed to be behind the light fixtures. A relocation of utility services and lines and pipes are certainly welcome. Uh, anything they can do to uh, diminish all that material necessary infrastructure is, is um, uh, something that would be favorable, I think. Um, on uh, the signage, the applicant has proposed um, that we look at approving the lettering, just lettering for a sign. Um, the dimensions have been provided. The specific sign copy has not been provided. Um, the dimensions do uh, appear to, they do um, conform to the um, limitations in the code for historic signs. The frame, the um, kind of the white frame that you see on the existing building, it's either plaster or cement, it's a raised kind of uh, white frame that probably maybe it, it had a sign on it before. Um, that isn't large enough. Even though the application states the sign will be within that, uh, the applicant has stated verbally that that will have to be enlarged or a new one will have to be put up. So we would want to hear from the applicant on that. Um, and on the materials for the new frame and the sign. There are two decorative elements shown on each side of the frame. I think um, those are decorative elements, apparently not windows, so we want to hear from the applicant on that. Um, item eight uh, doesn't apply to the project because they are not altering the, the building to reflect a different uh, style. Uh, number nine, there's a typo there. This application is, as proposed, uh, is consistent with uh, all of the guidelines. It's expected to be able to meet the land development code and be con and it is consistent with the city's comprehensive plan. And this uh, application was noticed and there were no comments received on it. Uh, staff recommends approval of the application to renovate the facade of the existing commercial building, including removal of the existing garage door and wood siding and installation of a new garage door, new entry door, new transom windows, new light fixtures, new signage, and new stucco siding, and relocation and consolidation of the utility service. I've listed a number of conditions here. What I'd like is for um, you to um, you know, review this and, and give your comments and hear from the applicant. Uh, these were just kind of a list of items for you to consider um, conditioning that may not have been specifically addressed in the application. So uh, rather than go over those, um, I'll defer to pleasure of the board. Are there any questions? No. Seeing none, would the applicant like to come forward? State your name and address, please, for the record. Good evening, Cindy Terrapani. I represent the applicant, which is T&Y Partners, Inc. Um, it's a pleasure to be back before you. I didn't expect to be back here so soon, but um, always a pleasure to be here. And this is a really exciting story to tell about this building. Um, the, the property owners bought it in July 2018, and the front part of the building that faces Pinellas was in pretty good shape, and they've already obtained two tenants. Um, there's a retail store that fronts on uh, Pinellas and is accessed from there, and then the yoga studio um, is accessed off of uh, Court Street. They're also underway, and there were no changes that were needed to the exterior of the main building. Um, they're also underway on some interior reno renovation for the upstairs to put in apartments, which I think uh, will be a great use for downtown. So the more people we have downtown, the more active downtown will be, more demand for services and restaurants and all those good things. So the last piece of the puzzle, frankly, um, is this little uh, sow's ear, if you would <laughs> say it. Um, and just I want to walk through the photos that you have in your packet that I provided. Um, the first photo is a straight on shot um, of the building as it exists today. And what you can see there is um, it originally was stucco and what happened was at some point in time there was um, this wood siding applied above the garage door, around the garage door, and to the right of the garage door. So all of that um, uh, siding was going to be removed. 
the white frame that you see that, that uh, Ms. McNeese was talking about with regard to the new sign location, that will be removed. And so, and then the utilities will be consolidated as best we can. And then the entire facade of this one story section, the one story addition will be re-stuccoed. Uh, we're not, the next photograph shows the, which is actually the west side, but it fronts on the parking lot. And this is, as Ms. McNeese stated, it's a lot line, zero lot line building. There's, we're not doing anything to that. Um, keeping the stucco there as it should be for this particular style, this mission or Spanish eclectic style, um, leaving the parapet there. You know, again, no changes to that. The third photograph, I think, kind of gives you an idea of why the applicant decided to make some of the proposals that he did to the building. You can see it in context with the rest of the building. Um, so obviously, the main thing they wanted to do was keep the key architectural elements of the building. And those are the, the stucco material, the stucco facade, obviously, um, the parapet, the coping there. And then um, to maintain this kind of warehouse feel, um, which is very popular these days architecturally, um, and to open up the building, get some light in there because it doesn't have any skylights or any other way to get any light. That's how the idea came about to put in uh, a garage door that will have windows all the way across the garage door and then the entry door to the right of that and this is I believe you have the elevation in your in your packet so that was the idea to to do that and then um, to, to also continue and make that connection to the main building was to continue the parapet excuse me the transom windows onto the new building so again adding more light but but making that adding that consistent architectural element of those windows um, along the along the side there so those are kind of the main um, elements um, of the application a couple other things that were I wanted to mention um, both the garage door and the entry door I know normally um, you would expect to see a cut sheet um, from a uh, product um, unfortunately each one of those is going to have to be custom made so what we're asking you is that um, the that the design as shown be consistent you know in the final construction plans um, it would be we expect it to be a, a wood frame both the garage door and the entry door but with a lot of light as you can see the whole idea is to um, create that excitement and activity um, level with the light um, again the new transom windows again those would uh, um, um, pretty likely be vinyl or metal as well because there's really no there's no overhang there with the metal, with the wooden windows, you're just likely to continually be replacing those. So we would ask that those be um, metal or vinyl as well. The light fixtures, we tried to pick something that would um, be consistent with the Mediterranean Revival Mission, Spanish Eclectic, whatever we want to call it, <laughs> this design that's kind of a, um, a really great design for Florida. Um, so that's what's proposed um, there. And that would be stucco um, behind those, um, material, those windows as well. Maybe we could talk about the signage for just a little bit. Um, it just seemed to us as we were preparing the application that we knew everything about the signage except the tenant. So what we're asking for your indulgence is to approve the signage location as it's shown on the elevation, the size, the maximum size, which of course the staff's gonna approve the final size when that comes in, and that it's a wall mounted sign. Um, and that way, rather than spend everyone's time coming back for something that we're sh pretty 99% sure that's where the sign is going to have to go, and it's the right location for it, it's the right size for it, it's in the right scale of the building, so we're asking for you to approve that. Subject to, of course, the final permit, the staff would approve and look at the, co the, the specific copy, which you don't really review, you just, just make sure that it meets the right dimensions. The, in the total s amount of signage that we could have there is eight and three quarters square feet um, based on the length of the building. Um, and this, what's shown on here is about a little less, a little more than half that, right around half of that. So um, again, the final size to be determined by the applicant and the staff um, when that comes in with the tenant. And then there's a couple of, um, I wanna talk about the conditions for just a minute. We generally don't have a problem with the conditions. We obviously know that the, that the project's to be going to be conditioned on consistency with this elevation that we are proposed, and we understand that, the applicant understands that. The one thing that we are uh, uh, concerned about, um, since this, the board doesn't review paint and doesn't review color, um, we would respectfully ask that that be removed from those conditions. 
Um, but we agree that the text, for example, in condition number two, the texture of the stucco finish should be consistent with the remainder of the building, um, with the remainder of, of this building, that western facade. So we certainly agree with that. Um, on number three, um, we understand that the framing material should be metal and it should match or complement the main building. But again, we'd respectfully request that the word color be deleted in that one. Uh, again, in condition number four, the design should match the existing transom windows and main building. Agree with that, just delete the word color. And then on the last one, number five, the last part of this part of that is the panels behind the light fixtures, um, that the color should match or complement the remainder. I think we could just um, you know, delete that last phrase and end it with consistent with the remainder of the building's finish. Um, so that would be consistent with what this board has traditionally done. It's just not really got into color, it being such a personal choice. And the applicants um, are working with John Hoffman on uh, who did the design, and everybody knows he's pretty darn good at picking colors. So I think you'll be very happy with um, with the colors that are that are selected. Um, I, I'm going to stop there. I think I've answered uh, most of the questions or touched on the things that Ms. McNeese suggested that I should, but I'll stop and and answer questions. Um, I'm just really excited about this um, building. Many of you guys know it as the Coca-Cola building, because uh, although I didn't live here when Coca-Cola was still bottling, I understand that you used to be able to see, on the Court Street side, see the Coca-Cola bottles going through um, through the system there, which is really uh, kind of a neat thing. And I never knew it had a bus line there, but so that was an interesting new thing that I learned. So anyway, I'll stop there, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have um, about the application. On the signage, uh, Ms. Therapani, the decorative pieces were for the purposes of this rendering? Yes, and they may or may not do something decorative. Um, I mean, it would not be copy. And, you know, whatever the maximum size copy that we're allowed to have, is that is what it is. So um, it, it, there may be something there, and it may not be. No, I practice yoga at, this studi at <laughs> that studio, and this is, uh, I'm very excited about this. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's the last little piece of that building. <laughs> I think it's a beautiful rendition. Thank you. The Thank you so much. The current condition <laughs> is appalling, and this is going to be such an asset. Thank you. Will you be able to get rid of that cluster of wires on the front of the building? Well, you know, you never know about all of that until you get into it, um, but one of the clients is a contractor, so he felt pretty comfortable that would be uh, be able to minimize that and consolidate that, and obviously they have an interest in doing that to the degree that, mm -hmm. that they can. Um, so yes, we, we're really hopeful about making some changes that kind of get rid of that visual clutter of all the, all the lines. Well, I think the plans personify what everybody wants for the historic district. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No. Um, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak for or against this proposal? Seeing none, do have any motion? I move that this, the application CA 1942-100 South Canellis Avenue be approved as submitted. Um, I do want to address the, the applicant's concern about the color um, of the stucco and all the references to color. Speed, right. strike, and be stricken, yes. So for clarification, the motion is to approve as submitted with the amendments for the applicant as to color. Correct. Being removed. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. And I'll second the motion. Ms. Cornell. Um, could I, could I ask for a... Follow. Sorry, staff yeah. wanted to make a final oh. comment. Um, just a clarification on the conditions um, and also with the applicant. On the windows, I had material, maybe wood or vinyl, or changing to metal or vinyl. Is that what you're asking? Yes, ma'am. I would request that. Okay. So condition number four should not read wood or vinyl. It should read metal or vinyl, if you would accept that change, in addition to the color, removing color. And let's be clear, there's already a motion in a second. And so the original motion can be withdrawn or amended as if, if the person who made the motion would like to do so. Yes, let's, uh, I would like to amend the original motion to uh, strike the material for the windows as wood and change it to metal or vinyl. 
as well as the striking of references to color within that condition. Okay. And I'll second that motion. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Page? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Thank you very much. Let's get to get a building first. Okay, and the next application of the evening is application 19-50, 312 East Carpet Avenue, placement of two new signs on a contributing property. Staff report. Yes, and this is an application for placement of a freestanding sign and a wall sign uh, on this property at 312 East Tarpon Avenue. Um, this was the site of the St. Somewhere Brewing um, Company, um, you know, a serving room, and they have moved out of that building, and we have a new uh, business owner who wishes to continue that basic use. So the applicant is proposing to use the existing lamppost uh, and change out the, the sign uh, that St. Somewhere had, with, put a new sign, and also a wall sign on the second floor of the building. The freestanding sign on the lamppost is uh, proposed to be a metal sign of simple design with the name and brand of the business. There's a copy of that in your packet. And the proposed wall sign is limited just to the company's logo and will be made of wood material. And um, the applicant did not submit a um, graphic of where that sign would be placed, but as verbally stated, uh, and I'd like him to confirm that the wall sign will be affixed to the second floor front wall between the two windows on the flat surface, not covering the, um, oh, the, um, decorative block that's around each of the windows. Um, with that said, the sign will not interfere with the historical or uh, the historical character or the notable architectural features, and uh, they both can appear to conform with the land development code. They're both consistent with the comprehensive plan, and uh, this did uh, have public notice and we didn't receive any comments. On this application, staff is recommending approval of the application requesting to place two new signs at this contributing property with the condition that the applicant pull all necessary building permits and the, at that the wall sign uh, be located on the flat portion of the second floor facade and shall not cover the decorative block around the windows. Are there any questions? Questions for staff? Mm -hmm. Would the applicant like to state their name and address for the record? Sure, it's Gordon Scott, uh, 312 East Tarpon Avenue. I have one copy because my printer was having issues. So that shows the, the letters as part of our logo, the UB that would not interfere with the architectural um, I guess brick or concrete block on the second floor. Do you have anything to add to staff's report? No, absolutely not. Uh, just, you know, wanting to replace Bob's old sign with, with our new signage and then add those letters uh, just from a uh, branding perspective to get more notice so we get a little bit more traffic. Any questions for the applicant? I have um, a question. The initials will be the only thing on the front of the building then? Yes, the only thing right there. And will their size be proportionate as it appears on the picture? Yes, so I we had our artist, because I gave her the dimensions based on the um, application. So I, I, we had the dimensions put forward uh, on what we could do, and I think we went a little bit smaller than as large as we can go. Where is this supposed to go? That would be a metal sign hanging on the current, it looks like a realtor post, sign post, that's in the front yard. How big will this be? That is, and I, I believe we, I have the application and it's uh, sitting on my PC at home. I believe what we have, 42 by 40? 
by 42. Okay, 42, 42 by 42. By okay, yeah. 42 by 46 inches. 42 by 42. 42 by 42. Yes. Yes. I have a question for staff. Is there, is it okay? Well, in my packet, I don't have a signed affidavit. Affidavit. So maybe my packet's just. Okay. Um, Mr. Scott is the owner of the property. So he, he doesn't need an affidavit so we don't to represent that. himself. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's fine. Yeah, we should probably remove the blank sheets. I know <laughs> we leave them in here because of the. It was just confusing page to me. Page one of four, but uh -huh. we've Thank hear you. complaints about that, so it's probably okay to remove those. So, is this um, an individual comp logo, or is this a, a company logo? I'm, 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 is it more than one enterprise? No, it's 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 this unrefined brewing LLC, which this is the only location. This is where we're registered with the state of Florida and the federal government. So this is it. So I brand. have a problem with the picture. Okay, so I am going to address one thing. I know we discussed a little bit briefly before. You have a problem with the artwork that's on the photo yes. that cannot be considered. That cannot be considered. That's that's right. part of his First Amendment right to have All right. the artwork on the sign. Can I state that I find it incompatible with the historic nature of the town you can state that for the record that's not a problem but just to be clear the criteria that's in the application that is germane to the sign here is that um, it has to do with repaired rather than replaced it's number seven so I believe the application staff please correct me stated that there wasn't a previous historical design that this would be replacing, correct? It's there, replacing there was, a sign, but not a yeah. historical. Right. One there, of the, there was not a historical sign that was there that is now needing to be replaced with another like kind historical sign. That's correct. Okay. And one of your guideline um, items is researching historic signs. Yeah, there was no such sign at the property. So, so. the new material should replicate the building material being replaced in composition, design, color, and texture. Since there was no historical sign that was there before, then that portion's actually not applicable. That's that just that line is not applicable to this application. All right. And so we did have a just for clarification, we did have a conversation, just the two of us, prior to the meeting. Yes. And we discussed um, in some generality something that may not go with the historical feel of the community. Um, and while that is typically true, based on the fact that there was not a historic sign there before. That's not necessarily right. so. It doesn't have to, to match any particular sign because there wasn't one there before. Correct. What about the overall uh, historic nature of the village? That is not a, a, one of the criteria within. So he can put up anything that uh, is, as long as it fits the dimensions um, within the sign code. And and I'll clarify a little bit. Our what we're looking at is that we've modeled our branding off of Silenus, who is the Greek god tutor of Dionysus and also Bacchus, and that's all about wine and beer. And, you know, we went through many designs, and I know a lot of people say he doesn't have his shirt on. If you look at any historical reference to Greek mythology, he never had his shirt on. So trying to stay with that based on our branding is where we went. Well, I, I would just like to clarify. There was, a, there is... I don't know if it's still there, but there was a sign there for St. Sam. It's gone, yeah. It's right, <laughs> but it's not a this historic. Is, I understand. Right. right. So, but I just want to clarify that this sign, with your brand, is going to hang in the same location on the property. Is that correct? Correct. So it'll be approximately the same height as the other one. It, it's going to be on the exact same place, the exact same size that Bob's sign was. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure that. For the record, we are clear that the content of the sign cannot be considered. Of course. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Any other questions for the applicant? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor or against this proposal? To entertain a motion? 
I move that uh, application CA 1950 312 Tarpon Avenue for new signage be approved as submitted. I, I can't make them up. You, you can pass the gavel and you can second if you wish. Okay. I second the motion. Okay, so for purposes of this, you are a chair, so you can call for discussion and call. No, you got to keep the gavel. I know it's symbolic, but <laughs> um, you can call for a roll call, roll call vote. Roll call, please. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Page? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Okay, the application is approved. Don't forget to get your building permit. All right, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks. Staff comments? Uh, the Board of Commissioners did approve um, two new uh, Heritage Preservation Board members, unfortunately. I don't know which is the regular, which is alternate. One is um, Bill Sprecher. And the other is Kathleen Hallett. Okay. So. And that will be at next meeting? They will be uh, present when at next When they meeting? are sworn in, they will be seated. Okay. As so yet, then they Mr. Been. Sprecher's application at that point will, he'll, how does that? He will have, he can abstain from voting. He will what? He'll have a conflict of interest. Yeah. <laughs> right, he okay. would not be able to participate yeah. in his own Great, I'm glad we're going to have someone but from the members. But will you make sure that that uh, the other uh, new member watches all the prior testimony on this so that they're able to vote on, on the continued application. Is that okay? Right. For okay. any, and as just we discussed before, for any, yeah, for any continued application okay. to a future date, if they don't watch it, then they cannot participate. Okay. As long I'll as they watch it and they, can, and they, they know what was presented, if okay. there was any evidence presented at the prior meeting, then they can be caught up. Okay. Excellent. Sure. Any other staff comments? Yes. No. Is anyone able to ha to go to the web webinar? Is it tomorrow or was it last Wednesday? Um, I believe it's this win okay. Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. yes, I won't be able to, but I'm okay. very interested if there's going to be a recorded session yeah. of that. I w I my Wednesday's okay. full, but I would okay. really I would like that. I'll find out on all of these. Yeah. Please. Okay. Thanks. Any other board comments? Seeing none, we'll adjourn this meeting at 7.18. Thanks.